Over the past year, WSIL, the Southern Illinois Community Foundation, and Withers Broadcasting have partnered to bring you Giving Tuesday, every Tuesday. Yeah, every week we choose a new charitable organization from our area to spotlight. From homeless shelters to food banks to crisis centers, we wanted to show you the broad spectrum of nonprofit organizations that pour so much love into our community. But now it's time for the big event. On November 30th, WSIL will be the home of the Give SI Day of Giving, an all-day event to raise money that goes directly back into our communities and to those who need it the most. More than 100 local nonprofit organizations are expected to participate in this year's Day of Giving event. News 3's JC Brian went out into our community speaking to some of the charitable organizations that directly benefit from your support. Let's take a look. Heron House of Hope started in 2013 by the Minister Alliance uh, was a vision with the um, uh, a way to serve those in need with dignity uh, for our Heron residents. We went from Heron residents to the whole entire region of Southern Illinois. So we are here proud to say 10 years later, uh, through the community support, the Minister Alliance, all the local churches, the businesses, we nearly fed uh, 300,000 meals. When I heard about the opportunity to serve um, our region, Heron, Heron alone, uh, being a Heron resident, it was an honor to, to apply for the position and I just had passion to give back and I just want to give back to, the, to those in need uh, that perhaps might be in the same situation that I was um, years ago myself, along with my family. So um, I literally remember eating the same thing, literally eating the same meal for like a whole entire three months. Uh, because we couldn't afford to pay our bills. Um, a lot of times we had nothing to eat. So uh, I definitely do remember the struggle and remembering the struggle pushes me to strive forward to continue to address those in need uh, who are currently going through the same struggle as well. I think that's the reward for um, our whole entire team is that we see individuals, we see families, um, we see children that come in here, uh, all ages. They, they're very thankful. Um, they show how grateful they are in many ways. Um, some who might not, you might not think they're in a position to give, they will give what they can. Uh, what if it's a dollar or, or change? Uh, out of that monthly um, um, check they get, they will make sure, it, they'll make a tithe here like if they were attending a church, um, just to show they're thankful for their meals. Or perhaps a lot of individuals who have been here receiving our uh, um, services for the soup kitchen have been coming here to uh, volunteer their time and labor. So our team has become a family because it's incorporated by those who came to take advantage of our services. Our goal is to be able to open up our dining room soon so we can uh, bring back that sense of uh, um, that fellowship, the, the dignified atmosphere um, where people get to network and talk and mingle, um, socialize, uh, where we get to build relationships with one another again and share the gospel um, in that shape or form as well. You can easily call Heron House of Hope at 618-942-8500 or um, come volunteer. Please come volunteer. We are always in need for volunteers. Um, we always have something for volunteers to do. We would love volunteers to come be a part of our team um, and, and just to be a growing family to serve those in need. A special thanks to all the donors here in Southern Illinois because without those donors, without the prayers, uh, we wouldn't be where we're at 10 years later serving over 300,000 meals um, to those in need. So uh, a lot of families have been impacted by this ministry because of our donors, because of the prayers, because of the time and labor um, that has been donated to the Heron House of Hope. And because of that, we are very thankful. We're excited to move forward. In the midst of the storm that we've, these challenges we had to face the last couple of years, um, here we are pushing forward very strong um, because of community support. So we just flew our first flight in two years, um, last Tuesday, flight number seven with Honor Flight. We took 87 veterans out to Washington, D.C. Uh, to honor them for their service and their sacrifice that they made to our country. This trip is free for our veterans, but it's quite a trip for the veterans. It gives them a lot of joy, uh, the appreciation that they never received, um, and it also 
gives them the honor that they deserve. They can go out there, and especially our Vietnam veterans, take a look at the wall and find the names of, of friends and, and soldiers that they, they served next to that didn't make it home from Vietnam. It's amazing. It's one of the best organizations I could ever imagine to be a part of. Uh, many of our veterans are so selfless and, and don't think that they deserve any of this. And to be able to give them a small token of our appreciation is just amazing. And we all feel blessed to be a part of this. One veteran just emailed this morning and said it was the trip of a lifetime, that it stood next to him going to Germany after they tore down the wall. Um, he said that it just meant the world to him. He didn't realize how much people still appreciated their service. Um, he talked about the welcome home and seeing kids and, and older veterans, you know, thank him for his service. He said it was a trip of a lifetime is what he said. It's awesome. The veterans always say that, you know, the entire trip is outstanding. But they say that welcome home is what gets them every single time. To know how much people appreciate them and to see the crowds of cheering people, it just, it definitely puts the cherry on top of their day. So we always look for volunteers. Honor Flight is a year-round organization. We always have things that we have to do to prepare for the next flight. We have lots and lots of volunteers, lots of volunteers and good people that want to give back to the veterans and so it takes a great group of people to put this on and it, Southern Illinois is outstanding in their financial support and their support at the Welcome Home. We couldn't do this without them. It cost nearly $90,000 to operate one of these flights so donations are very important. We're always taking applications from veterans. Um, we want to get every veteran um, this opportunity, so we want them to sign up with us. Byram Fager, the CEO of the Southern Illinois Community Foundation, joined us for an interview to cover a few of the ways that SICF is giving back to our community on November 30th. Can you just start by telling me a little bit about GiveSI? GiveSI is a global um, movement started um, many years ago that it focuses around generosity and giving back to our communities. So when it started, Giving Tuesday was is always the, you have Thanksgiving, then you have Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and Giving Tuesday. And Giving Tuesday is our way to just recognize all the things that are happening in our communities and how we give back. And that can mean anything from the time we volunteer to the to our talents and how we use them. Like if you know if you play music, then you might play music for different people that, that could help them. Or giving money to help the nonprofits that we have. And so how does your Give SI Foundation, you know, how do you give back to the community? What's the impact that you've had? So Giving Tuesday has been around since about 2012, started in New York, and then it's kind of been around doing things, and now it's on a global scale. And many nonprofits have participated for quite a while in Giving Tuesday. Um, but last year we came together with WSIL, and we made Give SI so that it's one day where all the nonprofits in Southern Illinois can work together um, to make everyone aware of what we're doing in Southern Illinois to help our communities and then give people a chance to help every nonprofit all at once. And it seems like it really went well last year. We raised quite a bit of money. So, you know, how did the nonprofits feel about that? You know, were they ecstatic or, you know, how, how did it go? Yeah, I think our nonprofits worked, uh, were really happy with the way it went because each nonprofit had worked on their own in the years past. And so they each was trying to advertise, each was trying to do, get the message out independently. And so through our Give SI effort, we were able to bring them all together, use one unified message. and and everybody still got to tell their own story to their own donors, but we all got to then kind of get together and celebrate. Um, we had over 80 different nonprofits that were impacted last year, uh, and we raised about $155,000 just during that 30-hour window of wow. Giving Tuesday. Um, the impacts of that continued to impact those nonprofits for many weeks after that, and, and we hope throughout the rest of the year. And then as the CEO of the Community Foundation, how does it feel to know that you're impacting so many nonprofits that then 
impact the community? How does it just feel for you? Well, it's it's really the mission of what the Community Foundation is to do. So we're, we're here to support donors and we're here to support nonprofits. And so Give SI is our way to bring everybody together on this one day to say we're all working to build better communities. So we're, we're not only helping donors figure out the best way to donate to support the community, but we're also helping those nonprofits find the funding they need for sustainability and stability. Whenever they're providing a service, we need them to continue to be there day after day to provide that service. Thanks to the incredible generosity of our community during the last year's Day of Giving, more than $155,000 were raised to go directly back to those who need it the most. And this year, we hope to do even more. After the break, we'll let you know exactly how you can help make a difference in our community. On November 30th, WSIL will be the home of the Give SI Day of Giving. It's a 30 hour special event that gives you the chance to give back to our community. During that event, we'll host a phone bank with staff on hand at all times to answer your calls and collect donations. During last year's Day of Giving event, we raised a staggering $155,000 for more than 1,000 individual donations that went on to directly support Southern Illinoisans. This year, we've given you more opportunities Options and made it easier to donate than ever before. During our 30 hour window on November 30th, donations can be made online at givesi.org by calling into our phone bank or for the first time ever, Banterra and Legions banks have partnered with the Southern Illinois Community Foundation to accept GiveSI donations at any of their drive through locations. Donors are able to donate to as many local nonprofits as they like, or they can donate to the GiveSI campaign as a whole so that that their donations are split equally between all of the participating nonprofits in Southern Illinois. Plus, during the Day of Giving, the Southern Illinois Community Foundation will also offer donation matching, meaning that every donation goes a little bit further. With your help, we can make a tremendous difference for the people of Southern Illinois this year. Up next is another nonprofit organization that does great work in our area and needs your support during this year's Day of Giving. Well, we're so proud of San Francis CARE, and CARE is an acronym for Community Animal Rescue and Education. And we do all of that. We are a low income spay and neuter clinic. So if you meet the criteria, you can bring your dog, your cat, your puppy, your kitten in and be spayed for, I think, $50, uh, which is very, very reasonable. If we don't get you before, you're, uh, before you have puppies, then we, we rescue the litter. We uh, rescue abandoned dogs cats, puppies. Right now we have close to 200 animals. We have a full-time vet. Uh, we've done about 15,000 spays and neuters since we have been open. And 15,000 times, you know, a litter of eight. Look at all the unwanted animals that we have kept from entering Southern Illinois. So we're very proud of that. Uh, we offer vaccination clinics. We really try to be community oriented and give back because we we ask for a lot. We ask for a lot of donations to keep us going. Our budget is $750,000. And in Southern Illinois, that's a pretty hefty budget to try to raise each year. You know, we do charge a, a small adoption fee and that is some income. The rest of how we keep our doors open is all donations. So, you know, we, we don't, get corporations giving us $100,000. We make our money $5 at a time and one bag of dog food at a time. So when Southern Illinois decided to get involved with the Giving Tuesday and they started matching funds, it got more people invested in our local non-for-profits and realizing how important it is to give, especially that particular day, it, it just draws awareness to how important your gift is. We appreciate every dollar and that's the thing, you know, sometimes I feel like I, I don't donate because it's not enough, but nothing is too small. Five dollars is not a small gift because if everybody gives five dollars we have thousands of dollars and especially when um, the community got involved and formed the giving si 
we get some of we get m more money than you even give. So it's a win-win. Just, you know, come out and see the lives that you're impacting and all the animals that you're saving. Uh, not to mention that we employ 18 people. We kept them employed all during COVID. Uh, you know, I don't even want to think of what would happen to so many animals that we have saved and rehomed. Uh, you know, it, they would just, I, I don't even want to think about it. Honorees for Veterans started in 2016 and uh, we decided we wanted to expand more than just having a national cemetery there. We wanted to bring this to the local cemeteries, but it's important for us to not only honor those veterans that are in national cemeteries, but also in the little country cemeteries like my dad's buried at. We work with wreaths across America, and so we buy all of our wreaths through wreaths across America. That way, the wreath that's laid at Arlington and the wreath that's laid at Carterville or Anna or Jonesboro are the same. So that's important to me to have all of them be the same. Our community support has been very good. Uh, support in Carterville has been fantastic. It's been from the very beginning. We get business support, we get uh, individual supports. Uh, we have uh, my connection with a former life insurance company I worked with, uh, does matching grants with us, so when we we send up so much money, they match it and everything, so that gives us a lot more uh, wreaths that we can lay on the veteran graves. My goal is to just keep spreading the word and getting more and more communities involved in this. You cannot believe the, the support that you get from your community and the feel good that you have. I'm not a veteran myself, my father was, he was a Korean veteran. Uh, I was during the time at the end of Vietnam War, the Viet Vietnam War veterans did not get very much respect at all, if any. And so, you know, we're doing this in, in the honor of those people. You know, they always say that you're, when you're, you die two times, you die when your body basically ceases to exist and then you, you die when nobody remembers you. So that's part of what our program is, is every time you lay a wreath, you're supposed to say the person's name. So every year, that person's name is still alive. I'm John. I've been the editor for All Things Give SI. From the weekly Giving Tuesday spots we've been running since last December to the special feature you're watching right now. In the last year, JC and I have worked with dozens of organizations from our area, and every single one is deserving of your help. Lots of folks around here care a tremendous amount and do some fantastic work to make all of our lives better. And hey, you all seem to think so too. I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for your support and hopefully your donations on November 30th. With your help, we can give back to all of these selfless organizations that make Southern Illinois, Southern Illinois. All right, that's enough for me. Mark and Julie, take us home. We've made a lot of progress over the last year, but there's still a lot more to be done. On November 30th, watch News 3 for the Give SI Day of Giving, the 30-hour event in which you can donate to help those who need it the most. And from homeless shelters to food banks to crisis centers, we've shown you a handful of the organizations participating in this year's Day of Giving, and now it's time to give back. Visit GiveSI.org to donate, and make sure to tune in on Tuesday, November 30th for the big event. Cause I'm out. Cause I'm out.